Well, good morning, River Gum. We're so glad that you've joined to joined us today in a sense of community, a sense of family this morning by logging on to our webcast. It's, uh, it's really important for us to continue to do that. And particularly when so much of our life is being affected at the moment. You know, I, I reckon that we're now into the stage where the novelty is worn off of this new season of new life, of, of doing things very differently because we realise, wow, the things that we can't do, the things that we want to do, you know, that's really affecting us and our spirits and in our mental health. And uh, we're really sensing that isolation and we're really impacted by the changes that have gone on. So you logging on today is so very important because it keeps that sense of community going, keeps that sense of family together. You know, the uh, I want to read to you a passage of scripture from Hebrews chapter 10, which I think is quite appropriate for us today. Let me, let me read it to you. It says this, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some in, are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. You know, that's what we're doing today. We're continuing to meet together when it could be so easy that we choose not to. Oh, it doesn't matter. We, we don't need to worry about that. We're feeling that sense of isolation. So we just go with that even more so. But no, you today are choosing to log on to be part of community, still be part of um, family together, even though we are separated in some regards. And I would encourage you to consider maybe joining in on, on our virtual connect groups that happen during the week. If you want to find out more about that, please just contact me. Troy at rivergum.org.au. We'd love to get you connected in with a virtual connect group so you're not feeling that sense of isolation, that you're feeling that sense of connectedness with, with others and to who can also encourage you towards love and good deeds, but also just bring life into your spirit as well by being connected with one another. So why don't you think about doing that? We're going to have a, a great service today. Uh, we're going to be blessed in a few moments' time by some worship. You're going to be blessed by Edwina's message on joy in a few moments as well, which I think, considering how we may be feeling now with that increasing sense of isolation, there perhaps is no better message for us to hear today than one about keeping joy in our lives. So I'm going to pray now, commit our service to, to the Lord, and then I'm believing that you're going to be blessed in our time together today. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious Father, we thank you so much that today is a day of uh, a, a new beginnings. Your mercies are new every day and we are living in that and we are joyful for the mercy that we receive from you today. Lord, help us feel connected, Lord God, with you and with one another, even in this remote setting that we're in today. Lord, I believe that you'll continue to strengthen us, bring us peace and bring that sense of unity together, Lord, in this special time. Lord, we recognise that where we are at the moment can be can be causing our spirits to be downcast somewhat. We'd be feeling that sense of aloneness, Lord God. But I pray that in these moments, you can refresh us and strengthen us for today and in the days ahead. Gracious Father, we commit to the service to you. We believe you're going to speak to us profoundly. We believe that you're going to do something within us to, to help joy be one of the defining qualities of our lives. Lord, we commit our service to you now. Come into our hearts. Come into our lives and our circumstances. Do miraculous work. And in, let us know that you are with us every step of this way. Lord, we thank you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning, River Gum. It is great to have you with us this morning. I hope that you will join us with worship wherever you are right now. Let's lift our voices to our God.
Come now to a time where we dedicate to God the offerings that we've made during the week through electronic means uh, because the ministry of River Gum continues even though we're in a, a very different season. You know, what you're watching now is actually one of the expressions of ministry from River Gum and so we want to thank you for your ongoing support of that. So we're going to commit back to God now of uh, the offerings that have been made in recent times and uh, particularly through electronic uh, means and, and so we just want to say thank you for that. Continue to support the ministry of the church. Continue to be generous to people in your world, particularly at this time. So uh, let's give thanks to God for the offering that you have given uh, and that you will be giving in faith in the future and may that effects be multiplied in terms of the plans that God has for our church family, for our community and for our world because we continue to uh, to be able to support the missionaries around the world which we'll hear about at another time and uh, so we're continuing to support the ministry 
of the gospel around the world through your generosity. So let me just commit the offering to God now. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give that you provide us each and every day of our lives to be generous to one another, to be uh, generous towards your plans, Lord God, for this world. And so, Father, we commit our offerings to you, the ones that we've made during the week in recent times, Lord God, through electronic means. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity you give us to partner with you, to see the world be different, to resource your plans for this world and to see lives be transformed. Gracious Father, we thank you now for the opportunity to give and the blessing that you have already placed upon these offerings, the anointing that you brought upon this giving so that the impact can be profound in people's lives and for your kingdom. We thank you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, good morning, River Gum. Welcome to church this morning. I hope that you have been having a relaxing morning so far. Can you believe that we have been doing church in this way for one month now? It seems unimaginable months and months ago that this is what our Sunday mornings would look like, but this is what we have been doing. And I'm just thankful for the technology that allows us to at least be able to connect like this. But I'm sure that you would agree with me that we cannot wait until we are standing shoulder to shoulder again at River Gum Community Church in our auditorium, worshipping God together, praying together, taking communion together, but also listening to God's word together. So this morning I'm going to be bringing to you the third week of our Joy series and uh, you will have noticed so far that uh, Troy has been preaching from a different room in our house every single week and so I'm continuing that tradition and so today I'm bringing you today's message from my office and uh, we are downstairs in our house and this is a room that brings me great joy. And so knowing that I was preaching about joy, I thought what better place than in my office, surrounded by the books that bring me great joy and uh, little things that you probably can't see behind me because of where I'm sitting, but they bring me great joy as well. But joy doesn't come just from possessions. Joy is such a bigger concept than that. And that's what we've been exploring over the last few weeks. And this week, I'm going to continue that by talking to you about how we can keep our joy. And I think this topic of joy is so timely at the moment because, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the life that we are living at the moment would have been unimaginable months and months ago, yet this is our reality. We are spending all our time at home, which for some of us is a good thing, for some of us that's a challenge. We are spending all our time with our family 24-7, which again, could be a good thing or could be a challenge and we have lost so much of our freedom freedom to go wherever we want to do whatever we want to go on holidays just even go to the beach troy would love to have been going for a surf last weekend but can't it's not essential and uh, we don't live anywhere near the beach and so his freedom to do that has been taken away and so these are things that we have all been struggling with and yet there is so much to be thankful of for as well. I have to be honest with you and say that my life is not all that different at the moment than it normally is. I normally work from home. I uh, My job has not really been affected at all. We're an online Bible college, so we were already set up to do this. Uh, I'm not homeschooling Taylor. She's homeschooling herself. Uh, really, I have got it very, very good compared to so many of my friends who have lost their livelihoods, who are struggling financially, who are trying to do a full-time job at home while homeschooling um, children as well. For some people, it is such a struggle and uh, my heart goes out to them. Yet in the midst of that, I'm very aware that even though my life has not been affected too much, I am still struggling keeping my joy. And if I am doing that, considering how little my life has changed, I can only imagine how much of a struggle this idea of keeping your joy is for so many other people. And so this is what I want to talk about today. And I actually want to pray before I go any further. I want to pray about this and I want to pray for you as we look at these ways in which we can keep our joy. So will you join me in prayer? Lord God, I just want to thank you for what you are doing in our life. We thank you for what joy is and that we have that joy but lord as we talk about these ideas about how we can keep joy in our life i just want to acknowledge that this can be such a struggle lord we just commit ourselves to you 
as we talk about this openly for the next little while. Holy Spirit, we welcome you and we ask that you show us what you want us to see, what you want us to understand, what you want us to take away from this topic today. And so we commit ourselves to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I am quite a joyful person normally. In our Connect group last week, um, our online River Gum Connect group, uh, Troy asked all of us whether we were a glass half full person or a glass half empty person. And I have always been a glass half full person. And yet, keeping joy is something that I constantly have to work at. You know, Troy brought us a great quote at the beginning of this uh, series and, and it's been mentioned every single week so far. I'm going to mention it again today because it is a quote by an author named Kay Warren and her husband is the founding pastor of Saddleback Community Church in Los Angeles. She's an author in her own right, but she has struggled with joy. She has um, beaten breast cancer. She has lived through with her husband the suicide death of their adult son. She has walked through so much. And so when she writes about joy and keeping joy, that is something that I pay attention to. And so this is a quote that you will have heard already, but I'm going to read it to you again. It says, joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And the determined choice to praise God in all things. How good is that? How good is that quote that just reminds us that joy is settled assurance, it is quiet confidence, and it is a determined choice. It is our assurance and our confidence and our choice. And so this is what I want to unpack this morning, this idea of ways in which we can make sure that this is the reality of our life. You see, joy is a theme that even though we've been talking about different aspects of it over the last few weeks, it can all kind of blend in together a little bit, defining joy and getting joy and keeping joy. But it comes down to the fact that it's actually a choice for us. And it's a choice about how we implement that in our life. And so there's aspects that I want to talk about today, five different ways in which we can keep joy. And hopefully they're practical for you. Hopefully there's at least one of these that you can implement straight away in your life to hopefully increase the amount of joy that you are experiencing in your life. So the first one of these, the first way in which we can keep joy is through the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. The Holy Spirit is the starting point when it comes to talking about keeping our joy. Joy is what we call a fruit of the Spirit. And we read about this in the New Testament. The fruit of the Spirit um, are listed for us. It is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are all the fruit of the Spirit living with us, in us. And so the Holy Spirit, if you're not overly aware of, of who the Holy Spirit is, the person of the Holy Spirit lives in us when we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God and our personal Lord and Saviour, when we become a Christian and we accept Jesus into our life. The gift of the Holy Spirit is part of that. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he lives within us and will stay with us. He's a gift from God that will stay with us until Jesus returns again. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can live a transformed life. It, that is the power that allows us to become changed. It is the power that allows us to become more and more like Jesus every day, if we allow that to happen. And so this Holy Spirit in our life leads to evidence of this change in us. And the evidence, or the fruit, if you like, is that evidence of Jesus working in our life through the Holy Spirit. And so the best way to think about it is similar to a fruit tree. If you have a fruit tree growing in your backyard, the evidence that it is a healthy fruit tree, let's say it's an apple tree. If it is a healthy apple tree, the evidence of that health is going to be apples. There's no point having an apple tree that does not produce any apples. It is not producing fruit. And so as Christians, the fruit of our life is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so one of the ways, the first way that we can keep 
the fruit of joy in our life is by engaging, actively engaging with the Holy Spirit in our life. He is within us if we are a Christian, but sometimes we ignore him. Sometimes we deactivate him. And so we need to engage and activate the Holy Spirit in our life. And then we are transformed. Then we have the power to do things we never thought we could do in our life. And one of those things is keeping joy. I want to read to you these words from the Apostle Paul. In his letter to the church at Ephesus, the book of Ephesians is what we call it in our New Testament. And he says this, understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. That is the power that leads in our life. That is the power, the power that rose Christ from the grave that is the power that is within our life and that is the power that activates in our life and allows us to keep our joy so this power in our life means that it can help us have joy irrespective of the circumstances because often the circumstances in our life are ones in which it is humanly impossible to have joy and yet we can because of the supernatural power of the holy spirit in our life that's why we can do what James encourages us to do in his epistle. And it says, consider it all joy or other translations have counted all joy. Consider it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Now, do you remember way back in the start of this series, back in week one, Troy mentioned that the impact that a woman, a friend of ours had when Troy led the funeral of this woman's husband. He started the funeral and as often occurs with funerals, the very first thing that happened was a worship song. And everyone stood and worshiped God. And this woman standing in the very front row, her face only seen by Troy standing on the platform. She is worshiping God on the worst day of her life as she buries her husband. Yet there are tears, but there is joy. She is worshiping God through the tears. There is great joy at the fact that she loves God. There is great joy in the eternal life that her husband is now enjoying. There is great joy at the fact that they are celebrating his life together. But there is devastation as well, and it is only because she has the power of the Holy Spirit in her life, the supernatural ability to see joy in this situation that she could worship God in that way and do it with joy. Now, the second way in which we keep joy in our life is by being intentional and by cultivating the best environment for joy to take place. Now, if we were living a normal life at the moment, one of the things I would talk about is the people that you surround yourself with. Now, obviously you cannot control the people you're surrounded with at the moment because they're your family and you are in a house with them probably or you're completely by yourself. And so both of those things are things that we cannot control at the moment. But imagine when life goes back to normal and you can actually choose the people that you surround yourself with. One of the ways in which we can keep joy is to be intentional about cultivating the best environment for joy to live and to grow in our lives. Now, this is not just about the people we surround ourselves with. It's the things we read and the things we watch and the things that we allow into our lives. But one of the other aspects of this that is so important is how present God is in our life. How much we are placing ourselves in his presence. It's not just about the people we surround ourselves with. It's the question about whether or not we are putting ourselves, surrounding ourselves in the presence of God. You see, often we can call ourselves a Christian, but in reality, we have very little to do with God on a day-to-day -day basis. We hardly acknowledge him. We rarely speak to him. We don't pick up his word very often. And so why, while we may say that we believe in God, we actually don't spend any time with God. However, scripture tells us over and over and over again that joy comes from being in God's presence. Here's just some examples of that. In 1 Chronicles 16 verse 27, it says, Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. In Psalm 21 verse 6, it says, Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad about the joy of your presence. 
in Acts 2.28, it says, You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with the joy in your presence. Now, I could go on and on because there's many, many examples of that type of scripture that reminds us that joy is in his presence. You and I keep joy. The joy that we have been given through the Holy Spirit when we stay close to God, when we remain in his presence. But how, how do we do that? It's great to say that, but how do we actually live that out? Well, we do that by spending time with him. We do that by reading his word, by praying, with just sitting in his presence, listening to him, serving him, worshipping him. All these things cultivate that perfect environment for our joy to grow and to expand and to increase, just like you would expect the apples to grow and increase on an apple tree. But just like that apple tree, that fruit, that harvest, it needs to be cultivated and anything that is cultivated requires constant attention. If you were to cultivate a new field of apple trees, you would be required to be there all the time. They would require your constant attention. If you're going to cultivate a new relationship, that will require your constant attention. And if we're going to keep our joy, that we need to be close to God, we need to be in his presence, we need to be what the Bible calls be dwell in the dwelling place of him. This is how we cultivate the presence of God. And I love this quote by a French Jesuit priest. And he says, joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. Let me read that to you again. Joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. If you are missing joy in your life, if you are struggling to keep joy in your life, if you find joy, that joy is fleeting in your life, then you have to ask yourself the question, how much time am I actually spending in the presence of God? Maybe that is a key thing for you to reflect on this week. Now, the third way that we can keep joy in our life is by keeping the right perspective. We have talked about the fact that joy is different to happiness because happiness is dependent on what happens. That's where the word comes from. Happiness depends on what happens, but joy doesn't depend on our circumstance. Joy does not depend on what happens, but it does depend often on our perspective. There's an incredible story in the Old Testament. There's many incredible stories in the Old Testament, but this one in particular tells us about this day at the beginning of the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Now, if you know your, your biblical story well, you will know that uh, towards the end of the Old Testament, uh, Jerusalem was destroyed. Uh, the Babylonians came in and they destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple and they marched everybody off to exile. Well, after a certain amount of time, that was over. And so they were allowed back. But one of the things they needed to do was to rebuild the temple. And so on this day, they had begun, they had nowhere near finished, but they had begun. It's like they laid the cornerstone. So they decided they've done so much work in laying this one stone, let's have a party. And so in the book of Ezra, in chapter three, we read about this moment where there was great joy, but there was always also great sorrow. And so I'm going to read this to you. Ezra chapter three, I'm going to start at verse 10. But I'm going to jump around a bit so you can just watch um, on the screen and see the parts of the story I'm going to read because the story is way too long for us this morning. So it says this. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests with trumpets and the Levites with cymbals took their places to praise the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple, they wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others, they shouted for joy. These exact circumstances, in the exact same moment even, we had people who felt great sorrow, but other people who felt great joy. The difference was their perspective. For one group of people, this moment represented for them it was a reminder for them of everything that had bad that had happened all the devastation that had taken place everything that they had lost they were reminded of in that moment yet standing right next to them were people 
And all they could see was this incredible future. All they could see was the potential that was happening right here in this moment, laying this cornerstone, rebuilding this temple. And they were so excited. They were so full of joy. In this same moment, one perspective brought sorrow and a completely different perspective brought joy. If we are going to keep joy in our life, we have to be careful what perspective we have. One of the great benefits of being a Christian, and there are many, obviously, because we've just celebrated Easter. But one of the benefits is an incredible perspective that we can have that is so different to people who do not follow Jesus. And one of those perspectives is the eternal perspective that we have. And so I just want to read again some scriptures here that just remind us of this perspective that we can have, a perspective that brings us joy and allows us to keep joy in very, very difficult circumstances. When it comes to the issue of injustice, we can have the perspective that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord and each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. When we are feeling persecuted or attacked, we can have the perspective that if God is for us, who can possibly be against us? When it comes to times of great sorrow, we can have the perspective that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. When we have no idea what we're going to do about something, we can have the perspective that we can trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, we can acknowledge him and he will make straight our paths. And when it comes to times of death and loss, not only do we have the perspective that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, but also that he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain for the old things have passed away. And again, I could go on and on. But then I know that some of you are listening to me right now and you are sitting there and you are thinking, you know what? You don't know my experience. You don't know how difficult my circumstances are. And that's all well and good, but you just don't understand what I'm going through it. And that's true, I don't. I don't know your experience. And while I've had my own journey of keeping joy amidst my own difficulties and hardships and pain, I can only tell you what I know and I can only tell you what I have experienced. And I can tell you that these words in scripture, these words that talk to us about this idea of perspective are so important. These are words that help us in the midst of our own pain and suffering. And all of these words are written by followers of God, followers of Jesus, who have lived through their own pain and their own suffering and their own hardship, and they have kept their joy. People like King David, people like the Apostle Paul. David wrote so many Psalms that I've quoted today and so many more that I haven't. He is a man who was literally hunted by King Saul, who had his life threatened over and over again. Here is a man who made terrible life choices in one season of his life and then lost through the death of his firstborn son, such heartache. But here is a man that has the right to teach us how to keep joy because of everything he's gone through. Paul, on the other hand, wrote one of the greatest passages in all of our scriptures about joy and particularly about rejoicing, which means to be full of joy, the act of being joyful. And he says in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. One of the great passages of scripture and even more so when we realize that this is a man who wrote these words in prison and in prison after being beaten and stoned and shipwrecked and thrashed and robbed and sitting in a prison cell, probably thinking that he would never be released. And so if that is your circumstance, is that what you have just gone through? And if you can still say, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice, then you have the right to tell us to do the same thing, no matter what our circumstances are. This is some of the gifts that we are given through our scriptures. And we should listen to these words. The fourth way in which we are to keep joy is to simply choose to keep our joy. 
Now, there was a passage I wanted to bring you of scripture in this part of my message, and I'm still going to do it, except Troy stole it like two weeks ago. He stole my thunder, and I was a little bit miffed, I have to say, but I'm going to bring it to you anyway, because the words of Habakkuk are words that we have to hear in this context. Here is a man who chose to have joy. And they're words I'm sure that you heard two weeks ago and you probably know them anyway, but these are the words of a man who describes his utter devastation in terms of the circumstances. He is not having a good season at all, but I want you to listen to a very small word, but a very powerful word. And so he says this, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet, there's a powerful word, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, yet I will be joyful in God my Saviour. And here's the thing, Habakkuk was not delusional. Habakkuk did not have his head in the sand, ignoring the circumstances around him. I think he was very, very clear on how bad his circumstances were. But his perspective was, and his choice was, to keep joy. And he used that very powerful word that you and I need to use in order to keep our joy. Yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Despite his circumstance, he chooses to be joyful and keep his joy. Now, if we go back to the quote by Kay Warren, we can see that Habakkuk here is choosing to have settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of his life. Habakkuk is choosing to have quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And he is making a determined choice to praise God in all things. The final way, though, that we can keep joy in our life is really not a difficult one, and that is simply to ask God to help us. We cannot keep joy in our own strength. It is just impossible. We need help. And we have help through the power of the Holy Spirit. But when we think we need even more help, we simply just have to ask for it. God is the giver of joy and he can help us in any situation, get joy and keep joy. And we keep that joy through the things that we've talked about today. Remembering that we have the power of the Holy Spirit, that all we have to do is activate that in our life, engage that in our life. That we are to cultivate, cultivate the best environment for joy to thrive in our life. And the best way is to constantly be in the presence of God. It is to keep that right perspective. It is to choose to keep joy, to use that tiny little powerful word that says yet, yet, I don't care what this looks like, yet, but I'm going to praise the Lord and I'm going to keep joy. And the final one is simply to ask God to help us. When we do those things, God helping us, we can have settled assurance that God is in control of every detail of our life. We can have quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And we have the determined choice that we make to praise God in all things. This week, this week, irrespective of your circumstances, I just pray not only that there is joy, but that you can keep joy. I pray that any joy that you experience this week is not fleeting. I pray that it is there for, for all your day, whatever day that is, and I'm gonna pray for that in a moment. I just pray that you have a supernatural expression of joy this week, that even though things may look devastating for you, they may just look like they are beyond anything you can control or they can just be a complete mess. Whatever that is for you, whatever your reality is this week, I just pray that you use that tiny little word, yet, yet I will keep my joy. I will count it all joy. Let me pray for you now. Lord, I just thank you for every single person listening to my voice right now. I just thank you for the myriad 
of expressions of faith that are represented here. Ways in which we are coming to you. We are in our lounge rooms, we are in our bedrooms, we are in our cars, we are watching on our phone or our laptop or on our television, but we are together worshipping you this morning. And even though our circumstances this week, as we go into our Mondays and our Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, we are going to have so many opportunities to lose our joy. But Lord, I just pray that you help us to activate the Holy Spirit in our life, to plug ourselves in and to be reminded that we have the power of the Holy Spirit to transform, transform our thinking, to transform our mind. And even though we cannot transform our circumstances at all, probably, that we can still choose joy. And however we may describe our circumstances, we can use that very powerful word, yet. Yet I will choose to rejoice. I will choose to be glad and I will choose joy. I will count it all joy. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for every single person listening to my voice right now. As we continue this series next week, as we continue to explore this issue of joy at a time where we absolutely need it, we are just so grateful and thankful. We praise you. We praise your holy name. Amen. It's been wonderful to speak with you today. I'm sorry we cannot do it face to face, but uh, this is a great substitute. I look forward to seeing you face to face again sometime. I hope it is soon, but I hope you enjoy the rest of this series. I'll be watching along with you next week as we continue this series too. God bless you. And I'll be praying that you can keep joy this week. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope that you've been blessed through our time together. I believe that Edwina's uh, message today is going to have a, a profound impact upon your life as we consider about how we go about keeping joy. Now, next week, I'm going to be talking about the issue of how do we identify fake joy in our lives? As soon as we use that word fake, we immediately think, I'm sure, about the, the, the American president at the moment who likes to use that word all the time. Fake, fake, fake. Well, you know, we can have fake joy in our lives as well. And next week, I'm going to bring a message, a powerful message about identifying and combating fake joy in our lives so that the joy that we do have is real, it's meaningful, it's profound, and it is transformational. So I hope that you'll tune in for that next week. Remember that during the week, we're going to be having our connect groups, our virtual connect groups. So, you know, contact me if you want to find out more information about getting connected in that way. Um, just email me at troy at rivergum.org.au. I can give you more details about that. If we can help in any particular way at the moment, then please let us know. I know a lot of people are doing it tough at the moment, particularly with their work situation being uncertain, already being affected in profound ways, that if we can help you in any way, please, please let us know. The prayer chain is still operating. If you need prayer for anything at all, we're here to help you. So please get in contact with us if you, can, uh, if you want some assistance in, in various ways. But God bless you. I hope that you have a, a blessed week. I hope that, uh, that you are safe in your, in your little cocoon of life at the moment, which unfortunately is our reality at the moment, but believing that the, that the new day will come and this will not last forever, um, but that God will sustain us and even bring us joy through these current circumstances. So let me uh, just pray to bless your week ahead. Let's pray now. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for the message that you have for us today, the opportunity to connect together in community and for us to prepare our lives for more of your presence in us, Lord God, and continuing your transforming work within us. Gracious Father, we commit this week to you. Help us, Lord God, live a week full of joy, even in the midst of our current circumstances. Lord, help us look for opportunities to, to love and care for one another, our neighbours, people that we may not even know. Help us to be generous this week, Lord God. Help us to be your instruments of care and love. And gracious Father, we ask more than anything else that we sense your presence with us, that we hear your voice speaking to us and that we encouraged every single day that we worship you, connect with you and be with you. I'm going to pray this now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week and look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.